Hello, my name is Donga Oto. I'm a political philosopher. What is tribalism? What is tribalism? Because when I raise issues that affect my people, I've seen so many of you responding in social media. What is tribalism? Now, in a democratic setup, people tend to enter ethnic trenches if their individual rights cannot be fulfilled. In any society, even in America, when individual rights cannot be fulfilled, people try to gather and collect rights, either on religious grounds, on associations, gun control, or on tribal basis. So I have successfully deleted the word tribalism from my dictionary because the word doesn't make sense. In political philosophy, there are even courses being offered in European universities on what they call eth ethnic democracy. So in the Ugandan context, is ethnic democracy equivalent to tribalism? You have been practicing it for 40 years. We have been watching. And when we keep quiet, you think we are stupid. When we react, we are accused of being tri tribalism. Wait a minute, what is this animal called tribalism? You see, we need to go back to history 120 years ago, 140 years ago, and we'll find out that the state of Uganda was constructed basing on ethnicities that existed. 1894, British protectorate in Buganda. After that, the British expanded their territory using Semei Kakunguru in Tumbale. They expanded into Bunyoro. In 1911, Gulu and parts of northern Uganda was annexed and brought to Uganda. So the whole state of Uganda is a conglomeration of ethnicities. Even in the front of our parliament, there are tribes, there are tribal units at the gates of parliament. Even election of members of parliament to the national parliament is based on tribe. So in the Ugandan context, we must clearly understand that the basis of the construction of the Ugandan state, which they call in philosophy constructivism, is tribes. So for anyone to bury the head in the sun and state that tribes don't exist in Uganda, that is hypocrisy. Now ask yourselves, why is it that 40% of the MPs in the national parliament are from one region? Who is tribal? Why is it that the airport with the longest runway in Uganda, Gulu Airfield, has been kept in abeyance and they are constructing another airport in Kanungo? How does that explain tribalism? Who is tribal? Why is it that in the year 19, 2019-2021, 52% of all the national roads tarmacked in Uganda, 52%, according to a parliamentary report, was in western Uganda, and the rest of Uganda, north, east, south, shared the remaining 48%. Who is tribal? Why is it that the head of most parastatals in Uganda, Uganda Revenue Authority, Uganda National Roads Authority, uh, Civil Aviation Authority, uh, Uganda Communications Commission, all the traditional parastatal, Uganda uh, um, Holdings Limited, why is it that 60% of the head of those parastatals come from a specific region of Uganda. So who is tribal? So when we get up to, a, to, to, to defend the ethnic rights of our people, we are not being tribalistic. We are being ethnically conscious. So in my dictionary, I've successfully substituted the word tribalism with ethnic consciousness. So Uganda is like a fruit salad. Uganda was constructed by the British. It was a protectorate. In Kenya, it was a colony. Uganda was constructed basing on several tribes. So we are like a fruit salad. In a fruit salad, the purple has to be there, the watermelon, the mangoes, the guavas. Every fruit must be there. And each fruit should not lose its distinctiveness. Otherwise, it ceases to be a nice fruit salad. That is Uganda. So the basis of construction of Ugandan state is tribe. When you go to national referral hospitals in Mulago, they will ask for your tribe. When you go to the police stations,
to record any statement, they will ask for your tribe. So that means tribe is the basis of survival of the state of Uganda. Even our constitution is clear that there shall be affirmative action in favor of marginalized groups. You cannot ma marginalize rock, you cannot ma marginalize Lake Victoria. You marginalize human beings. So the concept tribalism must not be misconstrued. I am not tribal. The Chief Justice is not tribal. In any case, there is no Uganda who is tribeless. Like some vehicles are tubeless. Every Ugandan has a tribe. Even the president has a tribe. So we should not be woodwinked when other people are using tribe to harvest from the state facilities and other people are spectating. No. We are properly educated. There are university courses on ethnicity and ethnicity is the basis of the construction of African states. Now, be it as may, in Acholi, if you want commercial plots of land, there are commercial plots of land in Gulu City, in Kitgu City, in Pade. You may even approach me if you need commercial plots of land. If you want to do business in Gulu, for example, the sand industry is controlled by the Baganda, the welding industry controlled by the Baganda, we have the Basoga, we have the milk industry controlled by the Banyankole. This is the beauty of unity in diversity. So you should not be fooled to think you are another tribe when you are a different tribe. We are different. We must accept this. We are different. Anacholi is Anacholi, Emunyankole is Emunyankole, Emuganda is Emuganda, Emusoga is Emusoga, Emuchiga is Emuchiga. We are different. We are different. Genetically, we are different. But we have to learn to live together. Now, but when you come to Acholi, you must respect our cultures. We have communal land, communal hunting, communal prayers, people go in the forest to collect loam soil for, for beautifying the house. Some people who are possessed by evil spirits run in the forest. We know the souls and the spirits stay in the mountains near water bodies. This is our culture. So you are not going to come into our area and fence land. No, these are cultural lands. If you want land, please come and have commercial plots in town, not the cultural land. Because by fencing land, you are violating our culture under Article 237 of the Constitution. Even the king of Acholi cannot fence land. No one does that. So the issue of tribalism should not be used to blackmail us when we are advocating for the rights of our people. Now, let's get to the root of it. Why is the traffic to Acholi land one way? Why is it a specific group of people are the ones acquiring money and going to buy land. Why? Why is the traffic not two-way? These are issues that should be answered. We have handed over to the President of the Republic of Uganda, General Uwe Rikagota Museveni, passports of people who are not Ugandans, national identity of people who are not Ugandans. Why for once can't Ugandans be jealous about what they have? We are allowing people to come from Sudan, from Kenya, from Congo, from Rwanda and get land in our country. Where does nationalism, where does nationalism come in? These are questions that should be answered. So I appeal to you, my friend, please get to your dictionary and delete the word tribalism. Because Uganda is like a fruit platter. Each ethnic group is distinct from the other. We should learn to live together or we shall perish together. So if you are coming to Acholi, please come and buy commercial plots of land. But you are not going to fence 10 square miles, fencing the rivers, fencing the swamps, fencing the mountains, and you say, that is land, your land. No. If you want to acquire land politically, you will also lose it politically. These are issues that has to come out very clearly to Ugandans. So we are not going to be blackmailed. In any case, when Ngoma Ngime contested against Winnie Bianyima and Mbarra, Ngoma Ngime lost the election because they said he was a Musoga. Wasn't that tribalism? 
So the fact we must have is that Ugandans, we should know we are different. The state of Uganda was constructed 140 years ago, ago and we have to learn to live together, although we are different. But the moment a particular ethnic group think they can dominate people, they can assimilate people, they can acquire easy money from state coffers and buy land, that is abuse. That is sectarianism, which must not be supported by any Ugandan. We have states that have been constructed basing on ethnicity. That is what we call in political philosophy ethno-nationalism. Eastern Europe, the entire Eastern Europe, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, dismantled basing on ethnic lines. The current war in Russia and U Ukraine are all manifestations of ethnicity. So ethnicity should be our pride. Now what do I propose as a political scientist? We need to devolve power in Uganda. The center is too attractive. We need to devolve powers from the central pole to the metropole. I want to live in my life where we have land registry decentralized at regional level. I want to live in Uganda where number plates are decentralized at regional level. I want to live in the country where the Uganda People's Defense Forces, the mighty UPDF, is only thin and for international border protection. I want to live in a country where there is local administration police. We don't need a national police force. We need a local administration police. I want to live in a country where the 14 traditional regions of Bukedi, Ankole, Kigezi, Karamoja, Lango, Teso, Acholi, West Nile, Boganda are distinct. As of now, of all the 44 trillion shillings collected by Uganda Revenue Authority, only 15% of that money is being given to the local governments. The current decentralization is fake. So this is where we Ugandans should learn to live in a country where we have unity in diversity. Other than asking us to bury our heads in the sun and claim that we are national, yet a particular eth ethnic group, a particular ethnic group is entrenching themselves in power. No! So we need to devolve power. I traveled to Nigeria. I went to the state of Akwa Ibom. I went to Calabar State. They have devolved power. We would even dismantle the national parliament and maintain a very small senate, like of 200 MPs of people who are 60 years and beyond. Justice Kanyahamba, Kanyahamba, uh, Speaker Rebecca Kadaga, senior people. But we have to devolve powers and we return it to the devolved units. Why should the cow of Umbarara district be an Acholi? Why should the DPC of Kasese be a Munyankole? Why should the regional police commander of uh, West Nile be a Mogisio? Some of these issues must be left to the devolved government. It's working well in Nigeria. It is working well in an ethnically diverse society like Ethiopia. Attempts to make it work is also in Kenya. Why should the chancellor of Gul University be Duguruakana Rugunda? Why? So we really need to go the Indian way, where we recognize we are different, but we have to live together in one country. These things of national unity is seemingly favoring one ethnic group, is seemingly favoring one ethnic region at the expense of other Ugandans. These are philosophical ideas that we must start debating as young people who want to bring back this country in line. And these are some of the philosophical ideas that some of us will seek the presidency of this country. Philosophical ideas cannot lose election. The individual can, but ideas cannot lose in an election. So in political science, we have a unitary government. We have the concentration of government, where we can have Minister of Finance in Karamoja, Minister of Lands in, in Barara, we have the congestion of government. Then we have decentralization, which the current decentralization does not work. Then after decentralization, we have federalism, 
And after federalism, we have devolution, is what Odonga Oto, the political philosopher, is advocating for. After devolution, you can have secession, having separate countries within one country. So I am for devolution because the federalism being demanded for by Buganda is being misconstrued. It is tied to land. It is tied to a biafe. It is tied to Kabaka Yeka. So let's have a devolved system of government where we have a honorary president attending the UN General Assembly. We have a honorary president. We have a skeletal Ministry of Health to help on issues like COVID. We have a national Uganda People's Defense Forces and we have a local administration police. Last, the post-colonial government of Obote they deliberately did educational exchange. People from Acholi would go and study in Mwiri. People from Mwiri would go and study in Mbachi. People from Mbarara would go and study in Sir Samuel Baker. That was a deliberate effort by the Obote One government. My father, James Soto, the late, rest in peace, studied in Fort Portal, St. Leo's, with Minister Tom Butime. General Aronda, rest in peace, studied in Gulu High School, there was cross-pollination. Their dream was that in 50 years, there would be cross-cultural appreciation and intermarriage and Uganda would be united. But that dream has fallen apart. It is now not possible. As we talk now, you can study from nursery school up to university in your village. You have a degree without appreciating the cultural differences in the country. So I would put my vote, I will put my vote for devolution of powers, for amending the constitution, for having a body that sits to ensure that the revenue raised by URA is divided to the local devolved units and we will have governors. This is what will unite Ugandans. So please don't come and fool me that I am tribalistic. You have to check your head. I am ethnically conscious. Thank you from philosopher, honorable Dr. Council Odongato. Give your comments and we see how we can make Uganda a better place to live in. The generation of President Museveni has played their role. We have the next generation coming in. And these are philosophical ideas that must be taken into parliament. But if we bury our heads in national unity, when key positions are given to a specific people and the rest of Ugandans are left yearning, then I can say we have a long way to go. If we make the center less attractive, people will not even carry guns to go to the bush to try to overthrow the government. Thank you so much for listening and may God uphold thee, Uganda. Thank you.